Hi everyone, today I want to show you a cool trick in Blender which will be making multiple colors on multiple objects but with just a single shader. It's not going to be a beginner's tutorial like most of my recent videos but if you're a beginner to Blender I'm pretty sure you're going to learn quite a lot from this video. If you're completely new to Blender, you might want to check out my Absolute Beginners YouTube playlist, which should uh, pop up somewhere on the screen right now. But now, without a further ado, let's just jump into the video. I'm gonna start with default Blender file, and before we begin, the main concept you have to understand before we jump into the shader creation is the difference between an instance and a duplicate of an object. If I select my cube and use shift D shortcut, you can see I'm creating a duplicate. If I enter the edit mode and let's say change anything here right now, you can see this object stays untouched. But if I use Alt D shortcut and move my cube to the right, entering the edit mode, you can see I'm editing both objects at the same time. So that's the main difference between an instance and a copy or a duplicate. A duplicate, if we go here, you can see has its individual mesh name. There is a difference between an object name, we can call it whatever we want, and the mesh name is separate to the object name. So all of these objects have their, their unique names, but they can share the same mesh as you can see here. So this mesh is also shared within this object. If I switch the mesh here, you can see we have third instance. So it's a might be a little bit confusing if you're new to Blender, but we need to use an object instances for this shader method to work. So let's now jump into the material creation. I have created this simple scene so we have a better understanding on what's happening. So just to double check, if I click on the objects, you can see we have individual object names, but they all share the same mesh. Now let's start editing the shader. And to do that, I'm gonna enlarge this panel here and switch to the shader editor. So by default, we have the principled BSDF shader. If I change its color, we will see the change in the viewport instantly. And I'm gonna begin with pressing Shift A, choosing the converter and color ramp node. What a color ramp is, it basically allows you plugging in any of the colors we can see here to edit the different values within the shaders. So if you click on the tip of those handles, you can also change the input colors. Let's increase the value and make something distinguishable here, like red. And let's make a blue color here. And the value you can see, or the actual color in the viewport you can see, is something from the middle of the graph. So let's say you would like to have some objects red, some objects blue, and some objects in the colors from the middle of the graph. I'm gonna press Shift A, choose Input and the Object Info node. So all you have to do right now is simply plug in the random uh, factor into the input and yeah, boom, there you have it. Now you have multiple colors on multiple objects. If you create an instance, another instance of all those objects, I'm gonna press Alt D and X and Shift R to repeat, you can now see the different tones from the color ramp appearing on the object instances. If you, let's say, want to have only the red and blue colors, you can switch the graph look from linear to constant. And right now, using the slider, you're determining the amount of one of those colors affecting the models. So a pretty useful technique if you, let's say, want to create uh, multiple cars with different car paints. Instead of making individual shaders, you can simply use a color ramp node like this. Um, let me maybe show you how it looks exactly. So I have created this very simple scene with the cars, which, by the way, is a this is a free Aston Martin you can download from the Chocofour store. Link is in the video description. But let's now add the color ramp node, plug it into the color input here. 
um, let's choose maybe this very nice, some very nice red color like this one, for kind of Ferrari red and maybe maybe something yellowy like like this. Okay. Now I'm gonna use the input object info and the random input here. Um, so let's move this handle to the right. And this is interesting be mm -hmm. because I was expecting the colors to be random, to be honest. And now we have this very cool gradient. Something I wanted to show you in the next example, but uh, yeah, there you have it. Sometimes it actually, it's, it's not random. It just uh, a gradient. I'm wondering if it's a Blender 2.80 development thing, but let me try a color and mix RGB node here because you don't always have to use the color ramp. This is just an example. I mean, the color ramp for me works the best if you want to make those very limited colors as I showed you with the cubes. So let's say we want to have some of the cars yellow, some of them just red, then we can use this uh, constant graph value here. And it's not possible with the color mix, but let's see if we have the same gradient. Yeah, so, okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know why it's happening, but now I wanna show you how to get exactly the same result, but with a more predictable way. So I have created one more scene, this time with the chairs, which can be also downloaded from free from our store. And here is the note setup, a bit different again, but the procedure is basically the same. I'm gonna use the converter, color ramp, plug in the colors, um, edit the handles, obviously. So let's say we have this nice blue and yeah, this kind of setup. We have a middle value here. And now instead of using the random input from the object info node like this, I wonder if it's gonna be gradient again. No, oof. Um, yeah, let's, yeah, just, I was just wondering why we have so little blue, uh, so little yellow. Let's now use the object index input. And when we do this, you will see basically no change here. And that's because we have to set up an index to our object. We can do that in the relations tab here within the object settings. So you can see we have the pass index value here. And all you have to do is simply typing uh, numbers in an increasing like logical way. So zero, one, two, three, uh, zero, one, two, three, four, yes. Um, now, you can see we only have one bluish color and most of the other colors are yellow. And that's because we need to give Blender a scale on how to use this node. So I'm gonna use the converter and math node. It might be a little bit confusing, but this is a node that allows you doing different mathematical operations on different values in Blender, the gray values usually. So I'm gonna switch the math method to multiply. And yeah, you can slowly see we are getting somewhere. If I start playing around with the value slider, you can see we have changes happening in the viewport. So let's hold down the shift key, left click and hold, and I'm just playing around with the values. So actually something around 0.4 looks pretty good to me. And yeah, all the other adjustments can be done directly from the color ramp node again. So you can see if I move it to the right, we have the color change here. Pretty cool method if you want to, yeah, create something as I just did. If you create more instances, this effect, well, I actually wonder what's gonna happen. Yeah, because the instances we have here, they have the same index values. So pretty useful method if you, let's say, want to create a setup like that and then adjust its colors 
later. By the way, we can also choose different grading options from the menu here. So with cardio, it's gonna be a little bit more smooth. Uh, the best, the most smoothy uh, result is achievable with the B-spline and the constant, you already know that we have just the plain colors like this. Thanks everyone for watching. I really hope you learned something new today. Uh, please consider donating to Blender Foundation because thanks to amazing people like you, this amazing piece of software can become even better. You can also check out our Choco4 store for the best Blender assets. And that's it for now. See you in the next video. Bye bye.